In this lesson, you will learn about current division rule. So we will learn how to apply it and then we will learn how to divide the formula also. So with the current division rule, we apply it when you want to calculate for current in two parallel branches in an electric circuit. Okay, so considering this circuit that I have here, you see that what I have two parallel branches, which is this branch and then this branch here. And then they all have resistors in them also. So you will see that what there's a current coming from the voltage source here, which is this current I here. So when this current gets to this node, the current gets splitted. Okay, into I1 and then I2. So to calculate this current, that's the current I1 and I2 in these two branches here. Okay, that's when you have to apply the current division rule. So when we apply the current division rule, we will be able to find the current in this branch here, which is I1, and then the current in this branch here, which is what? I2. So that's what we are going to do in this lesson. Okay, so we all know that from Ohm's law, you know that what voltage equals current times what resistance. Okay, you know that voltage equals what current times resistance, which is the total resistance. So I'll name it L sub T. Okay, so current times what total resistance, that's for voltage. Okay, so and also in my previous videos on resistors in a parallel connection, we learned that. When resistors are in a parallel connection, the same voltage flows across each of the resistors. So with this resistor here and then this resistor here, it's the same voltage V from the source that will be across these two resistors. Okay, so if you want to calculate for the voltage in these two resistors, for the R1 here, the voltage will be V equals what? I1 times what? R1, okay, which will give us this V, which is the same as for the voltage I have here. And then for the second resistor also, that the voltage will be equal to I2 times what? R2, okay, which will give us this V, which is the same as what the voltage I have here. Okay. So what then happens here is that you have to calculate for the total resistance in the circuit, okay, which is this R sub T here. So how are you going to do it? You see that uh, these two resistors are in a parallel connection. Okay, so you are going to use the formula for calculating for the effective resistance when resistors are in a parallel connection. Okay, which will be R sub T will be equal to R times that's R1 times what R2. Okay, divided by R1 plus R2. Okay. So we use this formula when you have just two resistors in a parallel connection. Okay, so we use just this formula when you have what? two resistors in a parallel connection. When you have more than two resistors in a parallel connection, you can use this formula. Okay, that one you can use one over. You can use the formula one over R sub T equals one over R1 plus one over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus so the last thing 1 over Rn. Okay, so this will be the formula that you use when you have more than two resistors. Okay, so in this case, the total resistance Rt equal to the sum of the inverse of all the resistance values R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over r3 plus so the last value r sub n r sub n then you take the inverse of what you get then that will give you the effective resistance and that was just by the way okay so now let's continue okay so now that we know the formula for the effective resistance let's substitute it back into this formula that i have here so now the voltage will be equal to current times what the effective resistance, which is what R sub T here. But we know that what R sub T equals what R1 multiplying R2 divided by the sum. So that will be I times what R1 plus R2. 
R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, this is what you have here. Okay, so from here, what you are going to do is that let's come back to this formula here. Okay, so with this formula, if I want to make I1 a subject, that would be I1 will be equal to voltage over resistance R1. Okay, but we know that this voltage here, okay, the same as what the voltage that's here, okay, and that's what we found to be this value here, okay. So, since they are in a parallel connection, the voltage V here is the same as what the voltage I have here. So, I can come and substitute this value here, okay, in place of the V that I have over here. So, let's look at how I'll do that. So, I will have my I1, I have my I1 to be equal to voltage, but I know that voltage is what carrying times what the effective resistance of which I have here. So that goes I times what R1 times R2 okay, divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, so all this divided by what R1. Okay, so I'm going to divide all by what R1 here. Okay, but I'm going to rewrite this in this form. So we divide by R1. Okay. So what will happen here is that before you can perform the division, you have to re reciprocate the R1 that we have here. Okay, so that'll be times one over R1. Okay. So when you do this, when you do this, we can cancel out R1. We can cancel out R1 from here. Okay, so at the end you have what I okay. You have I1 to be equal to I times what? R2. All divided by R1 plus R2. Multiplying with 1. Okay. Alright. So this will be the formula for what I1. So that would be I1 equals I. That's the total carrying times what? R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if you want to find for I1, which is the current in this branch, this is the formula that you are going to use. Same way, if you want to find for I2, okay, you are going to use the same formula, but you just uh, write R1 here instead of what? R2. So if you want to find for I2, that will be equal to I times what? R1 all divided by R1 plus R2. And then when you use this formula, you'll be able to what, calculate for the current in this branch here, which is what, I2. So this is the formulas that you are going to use for the current division rule. So you're going to use these two formulas, okay? These two formulas, that's the current formula that you are going to use to calculate for the current division rule. So with the understanding we have now, let's try our hands on some few questions. Okay, so the question says that we should solve for the current values I1 and then I2 in the circuit. So you are going to calculate for I1 and then I2 here. Okay, so you see that what the current from the source here is for 10 ampere. And then you'll be asked to find I1 and then I2 here, which is the current in the two parallel branches. So you are going to apply the current division rule here. So first of all, you are going to find I1. Okay, so you know the value of what I here and then we know the resistance values. Okay, so we just have to write down the formula and then we substitute our values into it. So I'm going to name this resistor here as R1 and then name this resistor here as what? R2. Okay, so to find for I1, I1 will be equal to the total current, which is I. Okay, multiplying R2. Divided by what? The sum of the two resistor values. That was R1 plus R2. Okay, so this will give me I1 to be equal to I, which is what? 10 amperes. Okay, multiplying R2, which is what? 2 ohms. Divided by what? R1 plus what? R2, which is what? 3 plus 2. So this will give me I1 to be equal to. 
ten that's ten times two over five. Okay, so this will be equal to twenty over five. And then this will give me a current value of what four amperes. Okay, so we know that what I want equals four amperes. Okay, so same way to calculate for I2, we are going to use the same current division formula. So I2 will be equal to the current I, which is 10 here. I represent it I here first. Okay, I multiplying R1. Okay, divide by what? R1 plus R2. Okay, so now let's come and substitute the values to the formula. So we know that what the I which is the total current is what 10 amperes. So multiplying R1, which is what 3 ohms, divided by what the total value for the resistance. That would be 3 plus 2, that's 5. This will give me a value of what 30 divided by 5. Okay, and then this will give I2 to be equal to 6 amperes. Okay, so you have I2 also to be equal to 6 amperes. Okay, so that's how to apply the current division from it. But looking at this, okay, the I2 here, okay, is 6 amperes, but from the circuit here, looking at the direction of the current, okay, it is moving in a direction opposite to the main current. Okay, so you see that the main current is moving forward, then this current is also moving forward, but this current here, which is I2, is moving backwards. Okay, so it is moving in the, in the direction opposite to the direction of uh, the total current. So in this case, it will become negative. So instead of 6 amperes, it will become what? Negative 6. So I2 will go to what? Negative 6 amperes. Okay. So instead of 6 here, it will be negative 6 amperes. Because it is moving in the direction opposite to the total current okay so to be a negative current okay so let's try our hands on the next question also okay so with this question here I was to calculate for the current value i1 in the circuit here which is the current value in the first branch here okay so you can see that you have three branches here okay you have the first branch the second branch and then the third branch we have to calculate for the current in just the first branch so how are you going to do this so on the previous question we had just two branches but in this question we have what three branches here so for this to be easy for us let's reduce this circuit here to a circuit that has just two branches instead of three so to do this you will see that you have two these two resistors here okay these two ohms resistors here okay being in parallel so you can find the effective resistance for these two resistors then Represent the two with a single resistance, and now help us have what a single a single branch instead of for these two. So to find for the effective resistance for these two resistors, that would be R will be equal to what R one and short R two. Okay, I'm representing this with R one and then this with what R two. So divide by what R one plus R two. So we use this formula when you have just two resistors in parallel. Okay, so we use this formula when you want to find the effective resistance for two resistors in a parallel connection. So that would be two times two divided by what two plus two. This will be equal to four divided by four. That gives us a resistance value of what one ohm. So instead of we using these two resistors here. Are going to represent it with a single resistor which has what resistance of what one ohm and then that will help us reduce the branches from three to two then you can now solve for the value of what i want so let's look at that so after doing this instead of me using these three branches we have reduced the circuit so let's look at how the circuit will look like okay so this is how the circuit will look like now so we start out we now have two branches here so therefore you can solve for i want very easy so I1 we call to the total current I multiplying what R2 divided by what R1 plus R2. Okay, so this will give us 
I1 to be equal to I, which is for 10 amperes. 10 amperes. Okay. Multiplying R2, which is what? 1 ohm divided by R1 plus what? R2, that was 3 plus 1. So this will be equal to 10 multiplying what? 1 over 4. Okay. So this will be equal to 10 over 4, which will give me a value of what? 2.5. Ampere. So that will be the value for what I want in this circuit. This is how to apply the current division. Please, if you have any question, let me know in the comment section. And then don't forget to subscribe and then turn on the notification bell so that anytime I release a video, you will be notified. Thank you very much for watching.